You guys have no idea how much paperwork you need to file just to get your hands on one planet destroying probe. Nonetheless, a dozen. But I think this might actually be able to pull it off. At the very least, it's gonna be quite the light show. We're gonna focus on one very specific part of the shield, and if we can get through it, then hopefully we can destroy the sphere. Yes! <laughs> we punched through! Oh, but did we manage to get the, oh, the star is still inside. Wait, so if the shield is back up, is it just gonna pop inside of the... What's up guys, welcome back to Solar Smash, the only game where we're going to use Einstein's theories to ruin the Earth. And I wanted to quickly mention at the beginning of this that I'm no space biologist, okay? Everything I'm about to say is coming straight out my ass. But like, you guys know, we've already done a whole bunch of stuff like flicking a rock through three-dimensional space to flatten the Bible Belt and accidentally raise America's average IQ. But like Einstein had theorized a model that fuses three-dimensional space with one-dimensional time to make space-time the fourth dimension. So we're gonna ruin about eight billion lives in an all-new dimension and scientifically prove once and for all that giving me the power to control time is a mistake. Now, I'm sure all of you guys have heard of the moon before, right? Like, big round thing in the sky, most people would describe it as orbiting the planet. Some might say that it's hurtling towards it. But like, I don't think many people can really grasp its size. So while Mexico is puckering up for the spiciest smooch it'll ever give, I want to quickly get a size comparison with the Earth and maybe see how much damage one moon can do. I mean, this is only in the third dimension. This is pitiful stuff, but we're moving up to 4D. So there's our moon hanging out in space once again. But what if I clicked here and didn't let time progress, would we manage to get ourselves a second moon? Maybe I could click here and then all of a sudden we might have a third moon? How many moons can I get? Turns out the answer is a lot. I don't think space-time really appreciates it when you duplicate planetary objects, but at the same time, Earth now has enough moons to make Jupiter wet, so that's a thing. What happens if I let time proceed now? Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, that's as close to a planetary gangbang as you can get. How did I only manage to hit the northern hemisphere? We still got almost, okay, I was gonna say, there's like two billion people alive, how? <laughs> but no, the Earth is absolutely done for. Huh, I think I can technically do that with any weapon in the game, which means it's a bad day to be the Earth. <laughs> and the universe for that matter, because everything is kind of chugging along now. Like, if I do too much, I actually do rip the fabric of space time. I I'm gonna have to reset the universe. I was about to try that again with something like nuclear missiles or UFOs or maybe even Cthulhu, but clearly we need to go with black holes because black holes are the natural way of screwing with space time. Pretty sure the event horizon actually does make it all fold on top of itself. So if I do a whole bunch of clicking right now, am I tearing open black holes? I think they might start real small. It's hard to tell. Even I have a limit to my powers. What do you think that's gonna do? Anything? Oh. Um. Did I open them all inside the planet? But the Earth is fine and no one's dead. What just happened? <laughs> I, I think I opened black holes so small that they didn't have the time to grow because I froze time okay l listen i'm not smart enough for this right now how about this rather than freezing time i'm just gonna slow time down that way there should still be a little bit of time there for the black holes to gobble up and grow but hopefully not so much that i can't control how big they get or how many i open okay no they still grow real quick but it seems like there's no limit to how many of them I can open. Oh dear. 
<laughs> you know, like, space time's a lot like drywall. You know, a couple of small holes, not that big of a deal, but if you open too many big ones close to one another, then it's all just kind of screwed. Um, I think we should just let this play out. Let's see how it does. Time is definitely messed up. <laughs> Do you think there's gonna be anything left? There's no way, right? I, I would be surprised if there's a crumb of Earth left over. Guess we're gonna find out eventually. Oh! They left us a whole nugget! Well, thank you, space time, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, can you really call that Earth? I want this abomination out of my sight, son. Thank you. <laughs> Come over here and clean up the mess, along with the rest of the solar system. I know that might be a little bit excessive. I, I could just wind time back, but you don't always need to flex your chronological skills. You know, sometimes you could just let loose, have some fun, blow up a turd of a planet. <laughs> Shouldn't it be a whole lot darker around here? There's no sun. Whatever. My newly acquired fourth dimensional abilities really made me want to return to this shielded Dyson sphere. Like, if you didn't see the last episode, this has a force field around it that makes attacking it a little bit difficult. You just summon one UFO, it fires its shot, shield shrugs it off like it's nothing. Like throwing a pebble at a tank, but fortunately, I can pause things and mount a much bigger assault all at once. I don't think encircling the planet is really going to do us any favors this time. Like, we want to punch through the shield. So I'm going to focus on one specific area, and hopefully all of these shots will be able to... light it up like a planetary Christmas tree, but that wasn't really the effect I was looking for. Fortunately, we have better technology. Let me quickly show you guys what I'm talking about. You've heard of Mars before, right? Well, say goodbye to Mars. <laughs> this thing should be able to one-shot a planet on its own, just one of them. But if I summon a dozen or so, then hopefully that'll at least be enough to get through the shield. I, I think it destabilizes the core, and that just kind of puts everything out of whack. Technically, the Dyson Sphere's core is a sun, which should mean everything will be way more out of whack. <laughs> this is a baby explosion in comparison. Fingers crossed this actually works. You guys have no idea how much paperwork you need to file just to get your hands on one planet destroying probe. Nonetheless, a dozen. But I think this might actually be able to pull it off. At the very least, it's gonna be quite the light show. We're gonna focus on one very specific part of the shield, and if we can get through it, then hopefully we can destroy the sphere. Yes! <laughs> we punched through! Oh, but did we manage to get the... Oh, the star is still inside. Wait, so if the shield is back up, is it just gonna pop inside of the shield? I guess there isn't really a shield left after it explodes. <laughs> it worked, though! We did a whole lot of experimenting on this thing last time. I don't even have a name for it. Like, if you want to name it, leave a comment. Maybe I'll pick one for next time. But a lot of people said that they want to see me try the laser on it, which doesn't really involve time, so to speak, but I can crank it up and drop this shield quickly enough. <laughs> Maybe I can peel away all of the layers on the outside and leave that juicy star inside? It seems to be working well enough. I have no doubt that it's gonna put up a bit of a fight, but yeah. Oh, and then there's the shield. Okay, that's fine. You know, I've got all the time in the world since I control both. I actually need to be kind of careful not to hit the sun with this thing. Because it is very much a possibility that I could just accidentally graze it and take out everything in the solar system. And there you go. We're left with nothing but a shield and what I still assume is a small star in a Dyson Sphere. Right? That whole technological outer core wasn't really a planet. So what happens if I hit this with something like a moon? <laughs> I don't know what it is about the moon, but it just tickles my fancy, so we'll pause time, 
And then we can set things up. Normally throwing a dozen moons at a star would be like throwing pocket sand at a bear. It's not really gonna do all that much. But for some reason, this star is really small and it's not gonna get its shield up in time. Oh, oh, okay, no, d don't fight over it, guys. Come on now, <laughs> I didn't expect them to all hit one another. They did the job though. We've got some little extra moon bits left over. I keep forgetting that the moon is a physical object. What are the odds I could launch the moon at a planet and then try to save that planet before it hits? I want to say this is Jupiter, but I'm not really sure because there isn't exactly a sign around. Like, I, I don't know a whole lot about these planets, other than the fact that, like, teachers have been telling me throughout my life that it really likes moons, and students have been telling me throughout my life that it's where girls go to get stupider. <laughs> I just want to see if I can stop a runaway moon from slamming into it. If we grab the laser, unfreeze time, then I might... Okay. It just got vaporized. Like, I've seen moths put up a better fight to a candle. All right. Maybe we need to dial that back a little bit. So once again, the moon is coming in hot, and we're going to try to stop it Bruce Willis style with a nuke. Or many nukes in this case, because I don't know if my aim is going to be great. Let's just try our best to actually hit the moon. Okay, well... We didn't have the timing quite right. Some of them turned around and followed it in. <laughs> it's good to know that they're moon-seeking missiles. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. At least no one died. I'm sure the five-second rule still applies here. It's still good. We just gotta head over... And then there you go. You know, nothing's wrong here. I'd be willing to bet that the nukes move quite a bit faster than the moon, right? Because they're actually propelling themselves, they're gaining speed, whereas the moon should be traveling at the same speed, kind of, you ignore gravity, blah, 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 okay? I know everything that I say in this video is technically wrong, okay? Hopefully, we can nuke the back of the moon before it slams into the planet. Does that sound like a good plan? We hit it, like, once or twice? before they all dogpiled into Jupiter. <laughs> Man, I'm not trying to screw up the solar system. I swear, I say, as I pick up my laser and try to wipe away my shame. <laughs> Thank you, son. Oh, man. I'm impressed that space-time hasn't just crapped out altogether. I gotta say, usually it would all just crash, the universe would go into PowerPoint slideshow mode, and I wouldn't be able to do anything, but so far it's holding up. A, a, a lot better than Jupiter did, at least. What else can we screw up with a moon? I'm sorry, is the moon all that's left? <laughs> this isn't the moon, right? This must just be one of those boring planets. Either way, I'm gonna call it Uranus because I'm gonna eat it. Come and get it, Cthulhu! Oh yeah, you gotta love that base boosted dinner bell. Hopefully you guys can all just reach in and rip it apart? Oh, you're just gonna take bite-sized morsels and then be on your way? All right, that's cool, I suppose. Yeah, it's just a rock. There's nothing going on here. So maybe it is a moon, but not the moon. Oh, we missed a piece. Don't worry, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah, it's not the moon. It's far too big. But it's definitely got that same crunch to it. So is there really nothing going on inside this? I, I should really just cut anything I find in half as soon as I get there, because you never know what's going to be inside. I was surprised after the Dyson Sphere. Go ahead and give you a quick slice. Nope. Just a giant space rock. What used to- No, it's still a giant space rock, it's just uglier. You guys saw how wonky things got when I fired just a hundred missiles at a moving moon. But what's gonna happen when I fire a thousand missiles at the Earth? Because that's about to happen. Oh, it's actually handling it pretty well. And by it, I mean space-time, not Earth. Earth is completely toast. 
I would be surprised if there's much Earth left after this. Oh man, look at all the mushroom clouds and everything. Just clouds on top of clouds. Did we hollow out the planet? Oh, I may have spoken too soon. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> Space time had a bit of a hiccup there, I suppose. <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> I have a tendency of aiming towards the northern hemisphere just to get a good angle so we can really see everything coming in, but it means all that's left is this south pole. Or whatever you want to call this. I feel like I've troubled the sun enough for one day, so I'm going to clean up after myself and blow up what's left. <laughs> Take myself a nice little bomb holding hole, and then hopefully you guys won't ricochet out. Nope. Just enough gravity to keep you in there. Beautiful. It wouldn't really feel like a party unless we invited half a dozen moons. So let's let them all intermingle. And then, at the last possible second, he ignites! <laughs> oh yeah, that that's a real treat on the ears. <laughs> I can't even imagine the forces that are happening right now because we got the moons going in and then parts of moons coming out. How did that not destroy the South Pole? How is there anything left? Seriously, I, uh, I'm really starting to lose control over reality here. What am I gonna do to get rid of this last little bit? The answer is black holes. It's always black holes. Just gotta do my best to open up enough of them. I'm like completely out of control right now. I'm trying to open up black holes, nothing is happening. I'm trying to move, nothing is happening. Just gotta kind of watch what's left of Earth get devoured and spaghettified, wherever all that goes. And just like that, you have a nice clean solar system. Empty lot, who wants to rent it? You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Solar Smash, guys. And I gotta say, you know, fourth dimension's a pretty fun place to be. A little hard to conceptualize, but a whole lot of great destruction. <laughs> if you guys wanna see more stuff like this, as always, be sure to leave a like in the video, leave a comment with some recommendations, and then maybe I'll return for a fluidly spinning universe again soon. Yeah, things are chugging along again. First you destroy the planet, and then you destroy your PC. Thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.